Welcome into another edition of the Sun-Times chat room. I'm Annie Costable alongside former Bears cornerback Charles Peanut Tillman. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. This is a <laughs> little pretty cool studio you guys got here. Yeah, we do it right here at the Sun-Times. Yeah, I like it. I was like we off camera, I, I want to ride my skateboard or my BMX bike on these walls. I think that'd be kind of cool. I think we could definitely set something up. Yeah, y'all could film that. That'll be the next, <laughs> that'll be the next interview. That would make for a great video it edition would, for the would. Sun Times, but we're very pleased that you're here with Thanks us for today. Having me. Um, you're often in the media for your work um, that you do with your foundation and most recently your trek across Lake Michigan made headlines. Yeah, what <laughs> in the world was I thinking? Um, no, it was good though. It right, was a good time. 65 good time. miles, over 24 hours. What was the most challenging part about that entire journey? Um, probably Monday morning at about 08 or 8 o'clock um, that morning. We, um, we probably rode 40 miles and our chase boat captain said, hey, good job. You guys have 20 more miles to go. And you're just like, oh. 20 miles and you could see the skyline and you would row and row and I'm like it's not getting any bigger and Jake's like yeah it is I'm like I would often say I was like are we moving are we even going anywhere and he was like yeah we're moving we're you know we're going two miles an hour <laughs> we just gotta it just was a really long slow process what was the feeling then once you guys made it at the dock and got out of the boat and I saw photos of you both laying down yeah. in complete exhaustion. So what was the So feeling? I need to clarify some of that. There were supposed to be people at the dock to grab the boat. Mm -hmm. And I think if people would have got the boat, if they would have been able to like pull us in, mm -hmm. we would have literally probably stepped out the boat like, like we, we could have. But because nobody was there to grab the boat or to give us a rope or pull us in, I jumped off the boat and we're, we're holding it. So we're on our knees. And then finally someone came. And then that's when we were like, dang, all that reserve energy I had, I just used to hold the boat from drifting right. even further. So I think that was why we were like laid out on the floor. I think if someone would have just been able to, we could have threw the rope to someone, they'd have grabbed it. We'd have stood off or stepped off the boat right. and we could have just gave a hug or yeah, ha ha, hooray, we did it. But because nobody was there and we started to drift in the middle and I didn't feel like getting wet or jumping in the water. So After we jumped 24 on the boat. hours, you'd think someone would be yeah, there so standing. And maybe waiting. Jake could tell you otherwise, but that was my reasoning. I think we, mm -hmm. we the plan would have, we just could have just walked off and be like, yay, we did it. Congrats, everybody. All right. Mazel tov. But yeah, that, mm -hmm. that didn't happen. You guys were doing it for such a great cause, raising yeah. um, money for pediatric cancer research and also to help families mm -hmm. um, affected by pediatric cancer. How much money were you guys able to raise for that cause? Um, Jake's the, the money guy nerd for that. Mm -hmm. You can't quote me, but I, I think we're somewhat somewhere around 200 thousand okay but don't don't quote me just but somewhere somewhere around two hundred thousand I read also that during the trip you talked about um, mentally it wasn't very taxing but physically just the wear and tear on your hands and your body yeah well, is that accurate way to describe the trip I or do did I you at points feel like oh my gosh I don't know if we're gonna be able to yeah so I think anybody could do it I, in all seriousness I don't think rowing is hard and I'm not trying to say it's super easy it was difficult but mm -hmm. I think most people can can row I would rather row 25 miles than run a marathon I, th I think running a marathon is more taxing on your body um, but still in all it's it was great cardio I'm in great shape right now so mm -hmm. if anybody wants to challenge me to some cardio let's go I bet on me every time <laughs> while I'm still fresh in this moment. I'm but. running to take a hit class after this <laughs> if you want to join. <laughs> but no, I mean, it, it, it definitely was a challenge. I'm, I, I don't want to sit there and make it seem like, well, no, it, it, was, it was definitely a challenge to do that for 25 hours straight. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just this motion over and over and over. And you sometimes, you get bored, like, why am I doing this? I, I, I'm in the middle of Lake Michigan. There's nothing around me. It's pitch black. But in that moment, in the middle of the night, um, 
I mean, it was beautiful. It was like bathtub water. You could see all the stars in the sky. And I told Jake, um, anytime I'm in the, the outdoors and I can see the stars, like all a hundred million trillion of them, it reminds me of something when, when, you know, God tells Abraham, he's like, you'll have as many descendants or as many stars in the sky, that's how many descendants you'll have. And that's like the first thing I thought about. I was like, man, this is awesome. Because living in the city, living in the burbs, wherever, you never really get to see the stars. You might see the Big Dipper, a Little Dipper, and that's it. And that was just a, I don't know, it was like that serenity moment. Like, man, this is, this is, this is pretty dope. This is pretty cool. I'm, I'm enjoying this. And it, it, it made you remember, like, this is why we're doing it, man, for these kids, for these families. So, yeah. Where would training for that and also just completing that track rank in comparison to other athletic endeavors you've accomplished? So somebody else asked me that. I, I definitely, and again, I, I mean, no disrespect to the, the rowing club or, or community. Mm -hmm. um, playing in the NFL is, is, is definitely, or making it to the NFL is definitely a lot harder, mm -hmm. but it's probably uh, the number two most physical thing that I've ever had to endure. Um, 25 hours straight, nonstop, that's, uh, yeah, that's, it's pretty taxing on your body. And I think I had stayed up, I was up over 40 hours. So to be able to perform and then still, you know, you gotta think logically about where you're going and you gotta know what you're doing. There was one point I was rowing and I was asleep. I just was, I just did this for a good, maybe 30 seconds or a minute. Did Jake have to wake you up? No, he didn't even know I was asleep because I kept rowing and I was in sync. And I remember saying something to him. I said, hey, man, I think I just fell asleep. And he's like, what? I was like, never mind. And I just kept, I just kept rowing. And I woke up. I saw a battleship, uh, a, a U.S. boxer destroyer Navy battleship. Because after so many hours, I, I was hallucinating. I'm like... I know I'm tripping. I know I'm tripping. <laughs> is that is that a USS Boxer Destroyer or like an aircraft carrier? It's like um, and I said it. I was like, yeah, I'm tripping. I'm 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 seeing stuff right now. I, so, I know I'm I'm tripping. But yeah, your mind starts playing tricks on you after a while. You you think you see stuff that you really don't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was probably the it was funny, but kind of weird at the same time because. I knew it wasn't there, but I'm like, I know I see, I know what I'm seeing. I'm not crazy. And you've never had hallucinations before this? No, no. <laughs> but it, like I said, I did a little bit of reading and when you're that exhausted and you have been up over 24 plus hours, your mind starts to play tricks on you. Again, I knew it wasn't there, but I'm like, mm, maybe, but yeah, it wasn't. Did you guys do anything entertaining, any entertaining conversations to pass the time? What, what oh, was yeah, the conversation we watched, like? Oh, um, yeah, we watched Jake's. He's never seen the Avengers. Oh, wow. So we watched the Avengers. Uh, so you guys had a full setup in this boat. Oh, yeah. He's a part of the Beehive. <laughs> he is Beyonce's number one fan. Did you watch the documentary? We sang the documentary. <laughs> so Jake is familiar with HBCUs, mm -hmm. the historically black college universities. Mm -hmm. We, we talked about that and the bands, mm -hmm. and yeah, we sang that whole album twice. Would all Beyonce night. be proud? She would be thrilled. <laughs> I'm telling you, we, I didn't know he could sing. Obviously, I grew up with her music. We the same age. She might be a year or two younger, older, whatever, but mm -hmm. where Jake says, I was like, yeah, man, what you wanna listen to? And he's like, well, uh, hey man, you got some Beyonce now? Uh, I, yeah, sure. <laughs> that was a weird request. I didn't think that, but yeah. And then we just was, oh, I'm a single lady. Oh, I'm a single. We just <laughs> single lady it out. After making this boat, building this boat, mm -hmm. have you thought about a side job in carpentry? I know you're busy. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, if it wouldn't have been for Jake, I don't think we would have made this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the muscle, you know, the, 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 the strength, mm -hmm. he's the brains. And um, it was his design. I just kind of followed his lead on where and what to do and how to do it. Mm -hmm. um, never built a boat, not talented with my hands like that in that, in that sense. So I just kind of let him take lead. We had our strengths and weaknesses. 
that was definitely a strength for him and mm -hmm. us while building it. And yeah, I just, I, I kind of let him take the lead on that. And I just, hey, what do you need me to do? There's a time to be a chief and then, you know, I let him be the chief, so. Would you ever do this again? So he said, <laughs> I say no. And he, he said to me, I said that a couple years ago and you came to me and said, yeah, I'm doing it again. So he goes, give it a couple months, it'll settle in and you might, you might change your mind. So as of now, today, September the 9th, 2019, I am saying no, I am not doing it again. Retiring. I'm retiring. My rowing. dog already chewed up my, my concept to foot pedals and I didn't even <laughs> care. I didn't even get mad. I was just like, to heck with that thing, I'm done. So mm -hmm. he, could, he could eat the whole thing for all I care and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have cared. The Bears opener was obviously far from what fans expected, what right. obviously the organization had hoped for. Um, what did you see out of this team that surprised you or that can leave fans hopeful for obviously the remainder of the season? Well, I think that uh, the defense they played, in my opinion, I think they played exceptionally well. They only gave up 10 points and you can win a lot of games by just giving up 10 points. Mm -hmm. Offensively, yeah, I think they could have ran the ball more. They could have um, probably made a couple of calls, made a couple of better play calling, mm -hmm. or the play calling could have been a little bit better. But it's only the first game. The only thing we found out um, Thursday night was the Bears aren't going to go 16-0. and That was the only thing. There's still time for improvement. There's no need to hit the panic button. They're still a good team. They'll be okay. What was your biggest concern after watching them in week one? Um, just offensively, you know, they, they weren't really able to move the ball. They weren't able to get the ball down the field. Um, I don't think we ran the ball enough. Uh, those are just two, two small observations that I, that I observed. What kind of pressure do you think right now is on Mitch Trubisky, especially heading into this week against former defensive coordinator Vic Fangio and the Broncos? I think the city puts a little, um, I think the city puts a lot of pressure on Mitch just because he's the quarterback and, you know, he was the number two pick, number three pick taken. Mm -hmm. So everyone's expecting him to perform like a number two, number three player. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with um, Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. and Deshaun Watson, and all these other quarterbacks playing fairly well, and Mitch is kind of below that, even though he was taken further before these guys, mm -hmm. people are starting to make that comparison. So I think from that standpoint alone, he's the city, fans, people are putting um, a little extra pressure on him because these other guys are outperforming him, but he just has to play his game. Some people progress faster than others, I mean, I, I, I think he'll be fine. He just has to, he has to run his own race. Wrapping up here, obviously as a defensive guy, we need you to talk about Khalil Mack mm -hmm. and what he brings to this team. What does this guy bring to this team and how important is he as this team pushes for a Super Bowl championship? Well, I'm, I think Khalil Mack is the, uh, he's the X factor. Mm -hmm. You know, um, with, the funny thing about him is you had all the same guys on the defense last year, you just bring Khalil Mack. And then his style of play, his level of play, mm -hmm. his competition, his competitiveness, uh, everyone else wants to be that. And then I think by him performing and doing so well, it challenged everyone else and it right. upped the ante with how everyone else needs to play and the level that they need to be on. And then you started to see everybody else on that defense start to perform. Mm -hmm. And I think he makes everybody else on that team better. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they started to believe in themselves, like, yo, we are a good team. And then it wasn't just Khalil Mack making plays. It was Kyle Fuller, it was Eddie Jackson, you know, it was Akeem Nick. Like, they, they all started to make plays. And that's, that's good because there, there'll be, there, there will be games when Khalil Mack won't get a sack, force fumble, return touchdown. You know, somebody else is going to have to wear the cape and put the team on their back. And I think we've been able to see that with this with this defense. It's not just him. It's it's a handful of guys. Lastly, if you had one tip to give this team on being a Super Bowl contender as an all around team, what would that message to them be? Last year's success was last year. Forget that. 
now you have to build on something new. You got to make a new name for yourself. You know, there's a lot of hype and um, excitement based upon last year, mm -hmm. which is fine, but you have to work even harder to get better or to, to go further than what you did last year. Mm -hmm. So just, just, you know, success fades and you always have to keep chasing and making a new name and a new identity for yourself. Mm -hmm. So 2019 is a new year, it's a new season. So you have to make a new identity and make a new name for yourself.